Hello and welcome to another video. In this problem, we're going to be working on frequency of the most frequent element. And in the problem, the frequency of an element is the number of times it occurs in an array. And you're given an integer array nums and an integer k. In one operation, you can choose an index of nums and increment the element that index by one. Return the maximum possible frequency of an element after performing k operations at most. So in this first example, they're basically saying, let's try to convert everything into a four. So to convert a one into a four, we're gonna have three operations. Then we have two operations and this is five total. So then we have all fours. In the second one, it says we can have two numbers and there's multiple ways to do this, right? You can, you can turn the one into a four, you can turn the four into an eight, you can turn the eight into a 13. Any one of those is fine. And in the third example, there are none, right? Because you, like the numbers are too big. So as before, we're going to try to figure out like what algorithm to use first and then kind of where to go from there. So first thing, look at the constraints. So we have 10 to the fifth. So 10 to the fifth means n squared does not work. Uh, so we can have an n log n or n or something like that. So immediately, usually dp probably falls out unless we have a small second dimension. So the most common algorithms here are going to be something like binary search, uh, two pointer sliding window, or those two are mostly it. Like those are the two most common, I think, or maybe some kind of greedy, right? So now we can go back and look at the problem and we can figure out like, what are we being asked? So we're being asked to, like a strategy is gonna to be to increase numbers to make them into another number. And let's try to get some intuition for that. So for this, like, uh, here they're not sorted and here they are. So we are allowed to sort. So if we sort them, let's say, then what's our strategy gonna be for making numbers equal to another one? Well, if we have a bunch of numbers, like let's say we have a bunch of numbers like A, B, C, D, E, F, something like that. What if our strategy is literally to say like, okay, well, how many numbers can we turn into A? And then how many numbers can we turn into B? And then how many numbers can we turn into C and so on? And we try that for every single number. And then the biggest one of those is gonna be the answer. So let's say we do that, right? So for example, let's just say we have some array, let's take this uh, 14813, say. Let's maybe make the numbers a bit smaller. So let's go like 1, 2, 4, 8, 10, 13. And so our idea is going to be, we're probably going to want to sort, right? Because we want to try to turn numbers into another number. Now we're probably also going to want to, if you think about it, if we're trying to turn numbers into 8, it would make sense to turn, like the numbers that are going to be easiest to turn into 8 are going to be the numbers close to 8. Right, because in a sorted algorithm, the numbers that are closer to you in index are also going to be the numbers that are closer to you in value. Like four is going to be closer to eight than one, right? So then, so there's going to be like some segment near eight that we're going to want to use. So let's say we try to turn, let's just try to figure out how exactly we would do this. So let's say we would try to like first turn everything into a one. Well, we can only increase, right? So because we can only increase, this is only one. So we'll just have some like result variable. And let's kind of get an intuition of how to do this. Okay, well, there's only one. What about for two? So we can only turn the numbers that are smaller than that number. So that's one intuition right there, right? So to turn numbers into a number, we only care about the numbers to the left of it, right? Because we can't like, if we're trying to turn something into a four, we can't like all of this doesn't matter. So that's one thing. So maybe we can like keep track of the numbers to the left of it somehow. But let's kind of keep going. So for two, we're going to say, OK, and let's say our K here is five. So for two, we're going to say like, OK, well, we can turn the one into a two and that only costs us one. So then now we can update our result to be two numbers because we can just have like two, two. Right. So we can update this to be two. And for four, we can only turn these numbers into a four, right? So this costs two and this costs three. So now we have five total. So for four, we can turn the one and the two into a four. So now we can update that. Now for eight, let's just say we try all of them again. So this eight, this one is too big, right? It costs seven, so we can't do that. This two costs six. So this four uh, costs four. So we can turn the four and the eight. Now notice if I look, if you look, so 
so when we tried to turn everything into a, a one, it was this number. If we tried to turn everything into a two, it was these two. Into a four, it was these. And then into an eight, it's these. So notice how like as your number increases, if I couldn't turn a two into an eight, I'm never going to be able to turn a two into a 10 or 13 or any of those, right? So as your number increases, you can see like you have a window of numbers and you basically try to figure out like what numbers can I turn? And as your number increases, you're just going to be either keeping the window the same from the left or making it smaller. So we basically have a sliding window here, right? So let's keep going. So let's try to turn everything into a 10. So we know we can't turn the two into a 10. Can we turn the four into a 10? Uh, no, we can't because it's six operations, so we can't, but we can turn the eight into a 10. So this would work something like this, right? And then for 13, can we turn the eight into a 13? Yes, but then we can't turn the eight and the 10 into a 13. So if we only pick one, we'll just pick the 10 because we can only get one either way. Now, the biggest trick to this problem is how do we like, yeah, maybe we can do something, but like, how do we actually update all our stuff, right? Like, for example, let's say we could turn all these into a four with a cost five. So this costs five. But then if we try to turn everything into an eight, how much does that cost? How much do we need to get rid of stuff? So essentially what you are doing, if you think about it, is like this. And I'm going to write it below this and this will make a lot more sense. So essentially to turn everything into a one, we're going to keep track of the cost it took. And then we're going to see like how much would it cost to turn everything else into it. So let's let's kind of walk through it one more time. So to turn everything into one in the beginning, we already have a one and it turns into a one. So that's fine. Now to turn everything into a two. So to turn the current number into a two. So let's write this down to turn cur into num into itself. Right. Cost zero. So that part makes sense. Right. If we're trying to turn everything into a two, turning a two, two into a two costs zero. But how much does the other stuff cost? So it's actually and it, it, you're going to see why this works, but it's actually the number of numbers you are trying to change times the difference between her number and previous number. And this will make a lot more sense as we get into it. But essentially what I mean is we're trying to turn one number into a two, right? And the difference between the current number two and the previous number one is one. So it's going to be one times one here. So our K that our cost, let's call this cost. And let's actually delete uh, this part. Our cost equals one. Now this will make a lot more sense once we keep going. So essentially what we did is we turned everything into a two. So now I'm just going to have a bunch of twos here. So we have a two and a two. Now for the four, we're going to do kind of the same thing. So we're going to say, okay, well, we're trying to turn everything into a four. So it costs zero to turn a four into a four. How many other numbers do we have? So the other numbers we have, we have two of them. And then what's the difference here? The difference is two. So we're essentially saying we have a bunch of twos. We need to turn them all into fours. What's the cost? What's the number of twos times the difference, right? For each two, it costs four minus two to turn it into it. So this cost, this total cost here is four. And so we have a cost four and we originally had a cost one. So now our total cost is five. And we do have like this whole window is valid, right? So our result is three. So now we're going to show how to shrink the window as well, which is important. So let's take the eight. And we're basically saying these numbers we've already turned into a four and this total cost was five. Now for the eight, the cost of turning an eight into an eight is zero. But what about the rest of it? So the rest of it is eight minus four, right? The cost of turning each one into an eight. And there are three numbers. So the cost here is actually 12. Right. So the cost here is four times three, which is 12 plus our previous cost to turn everything into a four. So it's going to be five plus 12, which is 17. And so now our cost is too big, right? Like this, we've essentially turned everything into an eight. And now our cost is too big, right? It doesn't work. So now how do we actually like narrow, like limit our costs essentially, right? Or how do, how do we like 
how do we figure out well, if we shrink our window like this window is too big so if we shrink our window how much cost are we saving well that part's pretty straightforward like let's say we want to get rid of this eight how much cost are we saving well we turned a one into an eight right so that cost that whole operation costs seven so the when you remove a number we can write this down as well when we remove a number the cost we get back is the value of the right number right like whatever we turned into is is we can say whatever we turned it into which is the right number here minus the original value right so we turn this one into an eight so so it's we the final value is eight and the original value is one so the cost that we're getting back by getting rid of this number is seven so now our total cost would be 10 but it's still too big right we only have five so then we do the next number and we have to get rid of this number so what's the cost here well it's eight minus two so it's six and now our total cost so 10 minus six now our total cost is four and that, so, so, so now this is like our valid sequence now and this makes sense right to turn a four into an eight costs four so now we can get rid of a bunch of this and now the numbers we have remaining are uh these two eights right so we have this eight and this eight okay so let's keep going okay so now we're trying to turn everything into a 10 so to turn everything into a 10 what's the cost of that right so we're turning these two eights into tens well there are two numbers and we each need to increase them by two so that's four more so four plus four is eight so now all of our numbers are 10 10 10 right we turn them all but our total cost is too high now it's eight we can only have five so we're gonna need to pop stuff off so we'll pop off this one and how much cost did we save well it's 10 but it was four so we saved six cost here so now our cost gets updated to eight minus six which is two so let's actually get rid of all this just to make it a little bit cleaner so now our cost is two here with these two numbers makes sense so let's keep going 13 so what's our cost of turning everything into 13? Well, it's the difference times the number of numbers we're turning, right? So three times two plus the old cost. So it's gonna be two plus six, which is eight. Makes sense. So now every number we have is 13. So let's get rid of all this. There we go. So yeah, 13, 13, 13. Total cost is too high. So let's start getting rid of numbers until we have a valid cost. So we'll get rid of this number. How much cost do we get back? We get back five. So eight minus five is three. And now our cost is fine and that doesn't make sense. And so our biggest number we had was this one right here. Now, obviously at every iteration, you just you just keep track of like, what's the length of your sliding window and you try to maximize it like a normal sliding window, right? So for every valid sliding window, try to maximize that with the result. But that's essentially it. So we can go, we can get the new cost in big O one time. We can add elements in big O one time and we can get rid of elements in big O one time. So now we'll have an O of n function that's basically a sliding window. And we figured that out from the constraints. We got rid of a bunch of stuff and we figured out like how we would do this. And because it asks for a maximum, for a maximum sliding window and DP are probably the most two common things, right? A valid sliding window can give you a maximum and DP can give you a maximum. So those are the two things you should be looking at. Or a binary search, I guess. So we figured that out. Okay, so now let's code it up. So we're gonna sort our numbers. And we're gonna have a left bound and we're going to have a result and we can set that equal to zero or something and we're going to have a count for the cost or we can have a cost right for the cost of turning everything into other numbers okay so we're actually going to start at index one because we're going to compare every number to the number before to figure out like what's the difference like if you go back to this picture Right. Once we have some valid numbers and we are converting, we're going to figure out like what's the difference between the number and the old number and the cost for the first number, like right to turn the first number into the first number is cost zero. So we'll change this. We'll actually set the result to one because if they're if they're raised length one, then you're all, like it'll always have one. One will always be valid. So we're going to start at the first index. So we'll say four right in range uh, uh, one length nums. And now we'll say the count 
is we're going to add the current number, so that's going to be nums right, minus the previous number times the length of the window, not including the current number, right? The current number doesn't cost anything to, so like if we had, if this was our old window and we turn everything into an eight, it's the length of the old window, which is right minus left. Okay. So that's what we'll do here. So we'll say times right minus left, which is the length of the old window because the current number doesn't cost anything. So we'll add that to the count. And we'll say while the count is too big, let's keep removing elements from the left. So we'll say count minus equals, and then how much are we getting rid of? So remember, it's a difference between the current number we're on, right? Because essentially, we like here, we converted everything into an eight. So the number we're getting back is the current number we're on minus the number we're removing is how much cost we're getting back. So that's going to be nums right minus nums left. And then we increment our left pointer here. So now that we uh, have a valid sliding window, all we have to do is just calculate our result. So the result is going to be the maximum of the right minus left plus one, right? The current window we have, and then the old result. And we just need to return it, and that should be good. Well, let's see here. So this is nums right um, minus nums right minus one. So what's the error? Local variable count, oh, we called it cost. Okay. All right. And there we go. So let's go over the time and space for this one. So it's going to be O of n log n because we have a sort and the sliding window is just O of 1 or O of n. And for the space, it's going to be O of 1 because we don't have any extra data structures or anything. So yeah, it's going to be it for this problem. Hopefully you liked it. And if you did, uh, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.